seeing a lot of gents looking smart in their suits. I'm seeing bow ties. Uh, some look like they might have pulled out that wedding uh, outfit that they that they they had on that special day, and this too uh, re gives them that same feeling. I can see a hand at the back there. Uh, the ladies are looking outstanding. I'm sure the gents that are next to those ladies are, are feeling like ornaments around, around those ladies. But otherwise, everybody looks great. It's lovely to have everybody here. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to such a beautiful evening. Um, I mean, it's been an, a bit of an awkward winter, I would say. Uh, not like the ones that we're used to, where it's raining, it's miserable. Uh, it gives you that very English feel. Um, but it's been a beautiful, sunny winter here in Port Elizabeth. And I think uh, the same, I think the Joburgers can speak differently about the winter that they've had. We've spent a lot of days on the beach. They spent a lot of days at home. So <laughs> uh, we'll tell you what uh, an extended summer feels like. Uh, but otherwise, I'd like to introduce myself firstly. My name is Butle, but uh, my birth name is Butle Beetu Dumbu. Um, my dad named me Shane, but it's not a name that I, that I really uh, like using because it's not, it's not of the team that I like. I mean, he named me after Shane Warne, the great Shane Warne, but he played for Australia. I don't think I'm a fan of the team, so <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't really use the name much. But yes, um, um, and uh, I work at the university. Um, my great uh, leader right here, Vernon, uh, he's, he's the man that's pretty much guided me throughout the years. And to be standing here tonight is a bit of a, a coming home, more, more a nice full circle, I would say. Started as a student, uh, started on the program in 2012, very timid, shy, and actually when I was looking at it, 10 years later, I'm standing in front of you, program director, and he'll, he can share many stories of his first impression of the type of student that I was. <laughs> Coming from Grahamstown, he had assumed that I was this boy from deep in the lilies, uh, couldn't speak a word of English, uh, and that I was going to be overwhelmed by uh, being in such a classroom. But through his guidance and uh, his trust, I'm here before you today. But officially, I'd like to welcome some important people that are here. Uh, firstly, Prof. Zolega Soji, our Director, School of Behavioral and Life Sciences in the Faculty of Health Sciences. Uh, all the way from newly relocated, from uh, he was staying in Italy, now he's based in France. Um, our Prof. Pierre Lanfranchi, Scientific Coordinator at CIS and here tonight representing CIS. Unfortunately, in late notice, he did notify us and we wish him good health. Uh, Prof. Denver Hendricks, who's the CIS coordinator for South Africa. Obviously, the staff that are present and uh, CIS and NMU staff that are here, uh, the staff that are responsible for the administration and management of this program, uh, it's, it's, it's really great to have an all-round um, individuals that are here and to bring together the university and CIS as well. And most importantly, our students, our graduating students, would like to welcome you all to experience your first round of applause before your official round of applause. <laughs> just before we fully start with the program, um, I'd like to just obviously pass on a few words because I think when I was reflecting, it's been about two to three years since we've sat like this all together. I mean, the last graduation I can remember, I was sitting at the building uh, in the passage by myself in that building on my laptop uh, trying to do the same thing. So to be sitting here this evening and or standing here for myself this evening is it's really something that uh, we can really reflect on the journey that we've traveled, that we've had since COVID and to be able to sit here together without masks. Um, it's really something that we shouldn't take for granted because such, for some people, are not blessed to be able to enjoy such, um, such joy and be around other people. And uh, I mean, it for, it's very important for us to, to reflect and really look back and be able to say that we are the ones that are blessed to be here today. Because we know that there have been many, many lives 
uh, special to many that have lost their lives as well. I would be, I think when I get home, I would be wrapped around knuckles if I don't, don't say this. Uh, I know she's watching. Um, maybe this is a bit of a, a sidebar that I'm adding in here. I know she's watching, my fiance's watching at home. Um, I love you, baby. <laughs> um, I would have loved for her to be here, but unfortunately, um, she is one, eight months pregnant, and also we're having a, a bit of a traditional ceremony tomorrow, and for those that are African, you know, when you're having anything traditional and you're joining two families, you two have to, have to be separated, and uh, we've been separated for the last week, and it's felt like a year on my side. Um, so, yes, I do love you, baby. <laughs> Um, I'd like to call upon um, Prof. Zuleka Soji um, just to speak on behalf of the university. She's a very lucky lady. Hey? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. As you heard, I am Zuleka Soji. I am the director of the School of Behavioral and Lifestyle Sciences. In the school, we have five departments, and human movement sciences is one of the departments in the school, and sports management is a program within the school. Our executive dean, Prof. Zukiswa Zengela, is supposed to be standing here in front of you, and I was going to attend and just sit there and pretend as though I'm not, I'm, 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 yeah, pretend whatever I want to pretend. But then she is not able to join us, and she asked me to read just a very brief message to you. So I want to first and foremost welcome our very most valued collaborative partners, both here and those who are not here with us this evening. To our program coordinator, we are indebted to you, Fenon. To the sports management team, the lecturers who are teaching in the program, all the lecturers in the, pro in the human movement sciences department, as well as guests in this room, good evening. I want to say especially to our very, very, very important guests of honors, congratulations. This is your special moment. So on behalf of the Faculty of Health Sciences and the Dean, please allow me to share these few words of congratulations to you for your achievement. First, Prof. Singela, as well as the Executive Management Committee, wanted to express our gratitude at the wonderful partnership that has enabled us to be here today, this evening. Nelson Mandela is very proud to be part of this collaboration with very keen interest in terms of how as a university, because as a university we say this is a legacy program, and we want to see how the university then supports and commits itself behind this very important program. It is a beautiful thing to witness the echoes of our ethos of lifelong learning in all of you today. May you continue this journey and never falter even should you come across what may look like insurmountable obstacles. At Nelson Mandela University, we speak about being of service to society. We also speak about changing the world. And we want to say to you, this is how we change the world together, through determination and targeted actions that will help us to win the war against communicable diseases as well as other lifestyle challenges and illnesses. This ceremony for us is special because for the graduates, you chose Nelson Mandela University to be the university that must be part of your development and growth. We are very proud of you. And we hope that you will also be proud of being an alumni of Nelson Mandela University. In the time that you've spent with us, you have gained new insight and skills 
which will enable you to invest back into your communities. You are one of very few people who have had an opportunity to, to, advance, to advance your skills. Therefore, we value your achievements and we ask you to do the same, that is to hold it in high esteem. We want you to change the world. We want you to be of service to society. And you may ask me, how do we do that? By bringing professionalism and ethics into your teams that you are part of, or everything that you do. By applying critical thinking in sports management to look at the challenges that are facing our communities in new light. By looking at real problems like teenage underage drinking, most of you, you know what has happened in Eastern Cape in our province recently. Very sad, sad situation. So what is the role that sport can play in ensuring that we are building resilience of our young people? What is the role of each and every one of you sitting in this room? Sports is very important and we are hoping that you will use the skills and the insight in terms of helping our nation, South Africa, as well as our province and your provinces in changing the world. How can we raise funds from cooperative businesses and the like to support our communities, especially sports within our schools? Because our young people need that more than anything else. How can we make a difference to the lives of our young and upcoming athletes to ensure their skills are developed and nurtured so that we can afford tragic circumstances that we've recently witnessed? If we manage to do that, that is empowerment multiplied 10 times. So as you go forth with your new certificates, with your qualifications, Enjoy the success, but be determined to make it multiply and deliver 100 times if you can. And that is how we change the world, by changing one person at a time, by being in service of society. We invite you to journey with us as we continue to engage in what we refer to as authentic engagements because we want to contribute in changing society. To our partners, thank you for collaborating with us as Nelson Mandela University. And to the graduates, well done. You worked very hard. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Prof, for that. Um, I think it's, it really tugged on a few heartstrings and uh, it gave us a lot of food for thought. I mean, um, sport in itself has been used as a gear to penetrate a lot of uh, injustices in our communities. And I think that's what, these are the tools that these young gentlemen and ladies have been given. Now, it's, uh, what's important is that that certificate that you get we see it every time we walk into someone's office. They, it's decorated with all these different certificates, but what is key is how you use it and actually do you use it. That is what's important. So you can walk away here with the greatest mark, but what are you going to do with what you've obtained? Thank you, Prof. And that's the message I think everybody got. Um, for I think everybody can see there's juice and water and a little bit of wine on the tables as well. So. Please help yourselves. We can see some people are kind of struggling to swallow. Maybe those throats are <laughs> just need some soothing. Um, our next uh, speaker. Oh, okay. Uh, please. Uh, I, I won't continue until glasses are poured. <laughs> uh, please don't be shy. I can see all the eyes are looking at the wine.
health tip. On a health tip. I can see now glasses are filled, happier faces, <laughs> brighter faces. <laughs> That's good to see. Uh, we've heard from Prof. Soji, um, from our NMU representative. Uh, it's time for us to hear from Prof. Pierre Lanfranchi, our sci for, from CIS, our scientific coordinator. Let's give him a hand. pleasure for me to be here. I would, uh, I would like to start and thank uh, my colleagues for the organization of, that's a bit, uh, uh, for the organization of, uh, of, of this ceremony. It's, 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 it's a huge pleasure. Uh, you have no idea much for uh, the International University Network at CIS is to be back to normal. Uh, I was last week in Cairo University where we had uh, the graduation ceremony and everybody was so pleased and we had the final projects presentations uh, and all the group were presenting face to face and it was a huge, a huge uh, Im impact to the students but to us as well. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Soji for the nice presentation she made and the point she, f she focused on because this course is about getting an impact to the local reality. We, from the first moment on, when we decided to create this course, uh, this idea was essential. So I'm an historian by profession and I will start to, to give some historical points. Uh, historically, we started in 2006 to, to work with, uh, with Nelson Mandela University. And you know, we, we had a meeting at FIFA, the international network had started, we had three countries where we worked, and uh, FIFA decided to create a new program. It was called Winning in Africa with Africa. And uh, received by the then president Zeb Blatter, that was made innocent of the accusation today, by the way, <laughs> uh, that uh, uh, touched him and the former UEFA president, uh, Michel Platini. Uh, but we were received by, by, by him and Jérôme Champagne, his special advisor, to say, what can we do? And we said, we offer you a certain amount to create courses in Africa. And they said, uh, from the money we will give to all Africa, four courses uh, will be uh, for you, so you, you will be able to organize four courses. And they said, now, Pierre, you have to give me, inside a week, four countries where we should organize a course. And I said, I, I was just joking, I knew that it, South Africa had to be in, so, and I, I made it. Uh, voluntarily a project where I say, okay, we need a course in French, so let's have Morocco. Uh, we, no, sorry, we need a course in Arabic, let's, let's have Cairo, we need a course in French, let's, let's have Dakar, we need, we need a course in Portuguese, let's have Mozambique, and we need a course in English, let's have Nigeria. And I saw that, <laughs> they looked at me strangely, I said, don't you think you forget something? I say, oh. 
where is the next World Cup? Oh, South Africa. Yeah. Let's, let's have South Africa. So, so poor Nigerians never had the course. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, during the last uh, 16 years, we had about 20, 25 Nigerians who graduated from this course. So that's, uh, Nigeria was present. But that's a moment in 2006 when we decided to go to South Africa and uh, we had, to, we had to, to, to choose which university to go to. And uh, I must frankly say the name Nelson Mandela uh, was one of the key, oh, that's me, I touched something? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that. <laughs> okay, I, I, I won't. I won't continue to touch it. Uh, the, na the name Nelson Mandela was a key element why we chose the place. But the place was fantastic, and we had to deal with fantastic people. Um, I would like to to to, to thank two of them uh, that are not with us today. Uh, Professor Rosa Durant, who was then the responsible of, of the project, and, and she did a, did a lot, and I always forget his name, Professor, uh, the, the, the then head of, uh, head, head of the school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, who was as well very, very supportive of the course. And, and there was a guy in the back, you know, so, oh, no, you know, and like that. a certain Vernon of <laughs> From the start, and well, we we started a, a fantastic journey, and this fantastic journey continued in 2010. No worries, I won't follow each year since 2022. You need to have dinner, but in 2010, all the countries represented to the network were present in Port Elizabeth, and in the last days, I, I wrote it down. Seven university asked me to say, please give my regards to the colleague there. It was so nice because when they knew that we were coming, they, they are so fond of the town of the time they had in Port Elizabeth. Uh, our colleagues from Spain, our colleagues from Egypt, our colleagues from, from uh, Palestine, our colleagues uh, from Argentina and our colleagues from Chile in the last week said to me, please say that for the graduation, and I'm so pleased to, to, to be able to say it to you, how much they loved it. And it was a great moment uh, for us all to, to do, uh, to, 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 to have it. And then there is a evolution in this course. The course in, in Port Elizabeth had to deal with uh, complicated situations. Imagine. We started with two courses in South Africa. One year for the people who were having face-to-face, uh, -face, and one with UNISA for the people who wanted online. The UNISA course disappeared, and we loved the attitude of, of Nelson Mandela University. Because they said, no problem. The people who started there will be able to finish with us. And that's in the spirit of the thing, have we wanted it. You have been there all the time. The next step will regard Gail, uh, because in 2014, one group went to Europe because they were the best final project. And Gail, you were with the group and went to, to Europe because the best final project was the South African project. And Im imagine that in 2020, the project, the, 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 the project that was the winner was South African as well for the second time. And there are not many universities in the network that can, be, that can say that they are twice that have been the winner. And three weeks ago, I saw, I saw Vernon that I had not seen for two and a half years because he was in Europe with a group that was winning again. So well done on the quality of the work. But this is an important moment for us today. It is an important moment because it's back to normal back to a situation where the students will be able to have classes in front of their teachers. You, group of 2020, you are a group I didn't see. That's the first time I see you. Because normally I'm there when I interview you, 
I'm there when you have to face me for, the, for your final projects, you know, intimidating. You saw me in for, my, for my home, it's, it was not the same thing. I mean, it was far too easy for you. <laughs> and clearly, we, we want the situation to be a bit more complicated. But, you know, these two years have obliged us to think about uh, what, what our course is for. And you know, this course has brought fantastic people. I would like to take one example. Uh, Solomon Mudege, who started as a student in the course, then he became the assistant of Rosa, then he, he did this course, was the best student of the year, then applied to the FIFA master, got a scholarship, and then got a job at FIFA. And he's still uh, working there. And he has done something fantastic for this course, because he has created a scholarship entitled to his late mother, uh, and he, he helped every year uh, female students uh, to, to get into the course. And it shows that the community of this course is a real one, not, not just a, uh, you know, everybody likes to sell the concept of community. No, no, we are talking about a real communal work. But more important than that, all of you, you played the game for a year, you made the course, even if you could not meet face to face. Even if the situation of uh, normal classes were not possible. And we have a debt towards the class of 2020. We have to make you more part of the community that you can be present. And jointly, CIS and Nelson Mandela University, we would like to remember you one or two things. First is when guest speakers come to lectures, alumni are always welcome to be present to the lectures. Secondly, and I think that's very, very important, during these two years we saw worldwide that students took hundreds of certificates. It was easy on the internet to do a course, a short time course. We are sure this course is not like that. That's something that will, lay, uh, that, that will last for a longer period and we will help you to validate the content of what you learned during this year. That you will be able to get better out of it. And probably the last element of that is we should, we should help you to build up a strong alumni association from the students here at Nelson Mandela University graduated of this course. I would like you to give I would like to finish to give you the example of your colleagues of Senegal. We started at the same time that we started here, the course in Senegal. The association of the alumni of the course in Senegal has been created eight years ago. Now it has been recognized by the government as a think tank number one for sport in the country. When there is a problem regarding sport, they ask the alumni association to do something. So you should be actors as a group for the future of sport in this country. The course in South Africa is fantastic for at least three reasons. Great stuff, that's probably the most important for me. Great students and this, the international and multidisciplinary background of the students. It is a hub for English speaking Africa and it is a hub for people who come from all the fields connected to that. So you can be sure that in this moment where international sports becomes more and more co complex, more and more international, you from these schools will have a bright future. And I would like to finish to talk about this young guy. 12 years ago, he said, Bukle applied to the, to the course, but I knew Bukle for, I don't know why, you came to, 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 I knew you the year before you applied to the course, remember that, we met, we met before you applied, and when you applied to the course, uh, you said, well, I, uh, he was very, very anxious, he, 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 had, he had a discussion how we should, how we should be dressed at the moment of the interview, yeah. and, uh, I, I, well, he made the course well. He was a very dedicated, uh, administrator of the course and, uh, and really a, a, key, a key figure. And we spoke for many, many years about his possibility
to apply to the FIFA Master. For the last 22 years, I've been one of the directors of the, of the FIFA Master, and I always said, Boucle, that's your future. After, at a certain time, you should start to apply, and he applied this year. We had a large number, I cannot tell you how many, but it's um, three figures, large, large number of figures, and we, we accept every year about 30. I mean, this year we accepted 27. Bukle made it. He was absolutely brilliant in the interview. <laughs> and you know, his, his, uh, Solo was the first. In the meantime, we had, uh, we had, we had others, and uh, you, are, you are the number, number six now. Uh, from, this, from, this, uh, from, from the graduate from this course, who, who will come to the FIFA Master. And it's, it's, it's a, I wish you a good time there as well. And uh, it's, it's one of the clear elements that show the link existing between our collaboration and future for our students, because you are what counts. We don't. Thank you so much. It's very difficult to follow that up. Um, and I think maybe to give a bit of background, because he has for a number of years asked me why, uh, why don't you apply for the course? You should apply for the course. You're ready to apply for the course. And my reasoning to it has been a very, very personal um, reason why I haven't uh, applied for the course. And I think it's something I did share with him. And I, I shared it with Vernon why now it's time. Um, it might be a, something personal, but uh, you know, I feel for the fact that I made it, I think it's something worth sharing. Uh, for the longest time, uh, my mother was unwell, and I always had the fear if I ever got accepted and I found myself in a European country and I get a call that uh, my mom is gravely sick or she wants to see me for the last time, I wouldn't be able to be there, and that would sit with me for the longest time. So that was the, the main reason why I never, ever applied. And I remember the last time she got sick, she fell into a coma, and when she, when she finally got out of that, the one message that she, she left me with, uh, she said, whatever your dreams are, go for them. And when she passed, there was no doubt in my mind that it was time. And... I even said to, to Pierre and I told Vernon as well after my interview, because in the interview I was waiting for the longest period. I think it was about 45 to 50 minutes that I was sitting there waiting for my interview. My interview lasted 15, 20 minutes. Then my fiance comes in and she's like, what happened? I was like, I probably did not make it. Because I've been sitting here for 15 minutes, but my interview was 15, 20 minutes. What did I say? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> and she reassured me to say, your mother is with you. And when I saw that letter, um, it, was, it was that moment of thank you. you. The time that I'd maybe sacrificed to be by your side, um, you, f you have fought for me to be here. So now the only thing is left for me is to, is to really make it worth her while and show her that, it, that she's, she's up there and she's, um, she's doing the right things for me. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, before I continue, I'd like to make an apology to Prof. Soji uh, for the long, for this time that I've been standing here. I've been saying my own employer's name wrong. Um, I should, I've been saying NMU instead of saying Nelson Mandela University because <laughs> we carry such a, a heavy and uh, proudful name. Um, so my apologies to you. And when you go home and when you go back to work, I don't want you to get to a management uh, meeting and say, you know what, I went to that event, but you know, Potentially that the program director spoke of, but there's one thing that I didn't like that he said. So I want you ready when you leave here, at least say if you have that conversation, he did apologize. <laughs> uh, but for us to continue, I think we at the part where is why we are here, to celebrate these students. And I think Pierre said it very well of the difficulty that we've been going through since uh, 2020 and you guys came into the course at a time when 
such a difficult period in our country, in our, in our world came in. And in our namesake, a very important quote just came to mind. And in his words, uh, Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. And I think that reflects exactly what you guys have done. During, to do any course online, at the same time be fully employed, looking after your family, protecting them from what, from COVID, seeing what's happening in the news, and still be able to focus in class, and to walk up here to collect your certificate, you really conquered what to some would seem impossible. And I think even before we call out any names, once again, I'd like to give you guys a hand. And I'd like to call up Prof. Soji to hand out the certificates to our students. And without further ado, I've been given this honor. Um, and myself as well, tonight is the first time I'm seeing these faces. And when we started, before we came in here, I was walking around and trying to put name to face. And I think I impressed a few of them and how much I recognize who they are. And I didn't tell them that it's it's through the conversations that we've had that I've s I can see that the character, this is the person, this is the name. Um, so uh, I would like to, I do have a bit of a talent in that regard. <laughs> there are some students that are absent here, so but we'll still give them the, the due uh, clap. But I think what's special, what makes this group even more special, and speaks even more volume to the quota that I read is the fact that all of these students have passed cum laude. And that is the first time in the history of this program that we've had that. So well done to you all once again. <laughs> Our first student uh, in his absence, Nuruddin Abbas. Our next student, Fakir Adula. for our next student, Kudrick Haggard. Gladstone Tabang once again, in his absence, Mr. Lewis Mounze. In her absence, Farai Christine Mzi. to show how busy our students are. Our next student is currently um, coaching the national side in a, in a tournament, Mr. Halman Makalele. <laughs> Debojo Ruben Monai. <laughs> this is when I mentioned he pulled out that wedding suit. <laughs> Our next student, Samuel Joroge.
Sindiso Twani. Country are going through a very difficult period, but I think that anybody could come across and through his difficulty um, that is taking place in his country of vintage of 86%. I think this has really, really shown and displayed the excellence of this group. Um, as much as it was life-changing what happened in our world, they've changed the course of this program. And I think what, uh, when Prof uh, Soji was speaking, she had mentioned that we have game changers in terms of sport here. And um, I think recently we've seen that um, Mr. Muzi, who like to call him, I think the rest of the students also call him in the class, uh, his, his consultancy wanted to do something at the university um, with his uh, consultancy firm. I think so. It's one to say that uh, it, it's placed on your shoulders since you've started that run. Um, the baton has been passed on to you and the rest of your class as well to say you need to take sport forward and the education of sport and what is happening in our communities. So I hope you guys have taken that baton on and you'll run with it. And with those words, I'd like to call on Muzi um, to give us a message from the 2020 edition class. Let's give him a hand. Um, what do I say? Um, I'll speak from the heart. Good evening, um, distinguished uh, guests, our professors, our leaders, and my fellow students. It's a great evening, and uh, the best quote for what has happened here is that it's an eye-opener. Whoever has not been here there is room to grow. And this, what we've learned here, is a toolkit for any aspiring person to lead in sport. Because there is nothing you could not have found. The event tonight is just a cherry on top. Even if we were not to get the certificates, but the knowledge, the rigor of interaction in that, um, well, I would say even a classroom, in that Zoom meeting <laughs> that took um, three to four hours of the night was enough to say you can go, even if you did not get the certificate, you would have had enough knowledge to go and blow the world and change the sporting world. A great appreciation on behalf of um, everybody who's been part of this program, to our partners, because those three hours meant that there was no home. And um, I must say and give such a word of encouragement to everybody, especially our fellow students, to continue with the type of resilience and commitment to self-development. Because what we found here opened so many eyes. And in fact, I remember when we finished, everybody was saying, so what next? Um, and it, it, it's a pity, I, and I feel sad that some of us would not have been here. Because this course, we went all the way from start to finish. The only face you know is the one that you see on Zoom. And this was meant to be the moment for us. And uh, everybody dug whatever they could. There were times when, you know, with the COVID and load shedding, at the same time, one had to contend with those just to make sure that the assignment, sometimes at 11.59, you will be pushing that assignment in. 
And um, when you work as a group, somewhere around 1,900 hours, some are not foundable. <laughs> so you'll have to push the work on through. But then the celebration thereafter, when you see that you've got in a 94 or something, then you know it was worth it. And uh, we cannot thank ourselves for that. I see our lecturers here. We see Venon, we, we worried him a lot. There would be a, a couple of emails that he got after 12, uh, midnight, <laughs> just to say, hey, please. Or you would submit twice because you are not sure whether it went through. But the journey as a whole has been the one that won, uh, if you are in sport, is the one that we can encourage other people to say, take this journey. And uh, you know, the guest speakers, uh, and, and, and they opened our mind, they blew our minds, just to know how the UFO works, how CAF works, and uh, I think those are the nuggets that we take with us as, as just ordinary people. But we know that um, we can make the difference. And I think uh, the message that goes with, um, with uh, uh, Nelson Mandela University is, is a big thank you. Uh, we would like to grow further. And I remember during the time of the, of the final projects, that opened everybody's eyes and wits and understanding that the world is not about us. We have come, we are at the edge of just being shipped out. And uh, indeed, what Prof Professor Soji was talking about is a, is a sad moment for, for the world. No life needs to be lost, but today, our, our youth find joy in the things that demolish life. And uh, this is just one of those, and we are said, one life lost is, a li is too many lives lost. Our role now is to say, let's change. Let's change the sporting world. And uh, I remember that Hellman was part of my uh, teaching days. He was my student. And I, I feel proud to see him where he is. We still talk to one another. And there are a lot of Helmand Kalele's in every area. Let's take that and thank this opportunity at Nelson Mandela and never take it for granted. We've set the standard. Let us assist to make sure that the standard is met. We thank God at the end who made everything possible. I'm a staunch believer that everything that we have and this occasion, we think God has made it possible and the university has been at the helm, the professors from CIES, FIFA, thank you very much. May God bless you. Thank you. I think all the speakers are, are really making my job so much easier. I don't have to find different quotes to reawaken those hearts and that passion. Um, I think Muzi and the professors so far have done a stellar job. I think just to, to put together in one quote what Muzi has shared with us, again in our namesake and Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And as we know, for Nelson Mandela University, that is something we stand very strong on. And we are grateful and proud and blessed to have these group of students, now our alumni, as family. So once again, we welcome you. This is the friendly city. So you are welcomed here, and we welcome you in our family of Nelson Mandela University. Uh, earlier, uh, Pierre spoke about
the individuals that make this program what it is. And he had mentioned a dear lady that's part of our team, and that's to this day I can't call her by her name. Um, and the reason for that is uh, she taught me in my undergrad, and after a few years we became colleagues, and she kept on saying, you feel free to call me by my bed. I still, to this day, cannot. And um, thank you very much for the next part, uh, Ms. Gail Helforty. Uh, we truly appreciate what you've put together. I know it took time away from possibly your kids, uh, your husband, I can see um, he's a man that sees the work that you put in and he appreciates the work that you put in. So thank you to you too. Um, I know as uh, Muzi said that we have to thank our partners for the fact that we're here and the work that uh, each person here has put in. Uh, so thank you very much for the presentation you've put together. I'm sure the students will really, really appreciate that. I had started this uh, presentation earlier, but obviously we didn't see it to its fullest. Um, I think the students will really appreciate it, and everybody here to actually learn about um, this wonderful country that will be hosting the World Cup. And I mean, I think it was safe to say that in the theme that we had set out was dressed according to the theme. And I mean, I can see Muzi and his partner put in some effort, which is great. Um, and I I'd, I'd think about myself being program director, it, should I just go normal black suit? And as I'd, as I'd, um, Mr. Bonisi there also pulled out that wedding outfit. But I thought, let me be different. I mean, we know this wonderful country um, is filled with sand, hint, hint, my suit. <laughs> So that was the theme that I chose to, to go with. And uh, behind that, uh, I just thought, you know, all of this that will be happening will be on those grounds. So I hope you guys enjoy this, um, this presentation and learn about this country where the World Cup will be taking place. Okay, I think we've learned quite a bit about um, this wonderful country. And it's one that, I mean, uh, it's been a lot of uh, talking points in terms of this next World Cup. And I think it will make for a very nice case study for, for any individuals going forward. Um, and as we said, as Muzi even said, what's next? Maybe what's next should be what happens at the World Cup. And I think just to break away from everything, I can still see some people's glasses are running a bit low. Um, I think let's refill our glasses and then we've got a little surprise uh, just after our glasses are nice and filled. We've we'll got a nice little surprise uh, for you guys.
Okay, we're gonna do the lucky draw. And then I'm gonna and then I'll call on Matthew. Oh yes! Jeez! I must do that. You know I totally forgot about it. I totally forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me. As I'd mentioned uh, earlier in our program, there is, um, and unfortunately, Professor Denver Hendricks could not make it uh, due to, to health reasons. He would have loved to, to be here and actually meet all of you. Uh, but what he did do and what he did request is that the short speech that he had put together to be pleased be read to the students. So that is what I will do for him and on his behalf. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words. I will be very brief, I promise. Program Director, allow me first to acknowledge all dignitaries, representatives of the university, the CIES, the faculty, the Department of Human Movement Science, the Nelson Mandela University CIES program, and most importantly, our graduates present. I would briefly like to touch on just three points. Firstly, I would like to add my congratulations on the successful completion of the program by our, by our hosts receiving their certificates today. You have arguably had the most difficult experience of all the cohorts to date as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic that has forced you to attend the program virtually in its entirety. If my memory serves me correctly, the cohort prior to yours had the benefit of at least one or possibly two block weeks on a face-to-face -face basis. We always stress that the program is very practical and doing it virtually cannot therefore do justice to it fully. So well done again, and hopefully you will have benefited from the program to the same extent as others before you have done. Secondly, I would like to urge you to use the knowledge and the skills you have acquired through the program to make a positive contribution towards sport and society. It should never be as it is sometimes the case, a matter of merely embellishing your CV or collecting certificates. I am also aware of the sports fraternity is a very close and a very closed one that is not always easy to break through and that people with qualifications are not always welcome. As they are sometimes seen to be a threat to those in power. If you are not already in a senior position in sport, do not despair. The easiest or best way to gain entry into the domain is at the base or grassroots level where your knowledge and skills are most sorely needed. It may not be the most glamorous positions, more so to work in, but without a stable, broad base of foundation in our sports federations, it is unlikely we will excel. There are obvious examples of those in our society. Our federations with stable level and work, but there are very few of them and are all also the most successful at the top and even internationally. So get involved at the level and work your way up. Getting to the top may require patience and take time, but you will ultimately get there. 
We have been provided with the tools to make a contribution to be successful. And yes, the university or the program cannot guarantee you a job or a promotion. That ultimately depends on yourself. Every year, I tell our graduates that, that it is their attitudes will eventually determine the altitudes that they reach. Many of our alumni occupy senior positions in sport, some even internationally. So, persevere. Lastly, I want to remind our graduates of the vast resources that they have gained access to as a new alumni of the program. Your successful completion of the program makes you part of a select but growing alumni base from 19 similar programs worldwide. The FIFA and CIS connection, let alone the Nelson Mandela University name, provides you with a license that could open doors. Flaunt that pedigree. Remember, you're always and you will always have access to the program and its mentors. You have access to us all, the graduates of the 15 cohorts that have preceded you. For help and advice, which you can also obtain from any of the institutions in the network, including the CIES itself. Make the connections via social media and other means that use that privilege to help you on your way. You have earned your right of passage. What I'm actually encouraging you to do is to exploit your status as an alumnus of the program to the fullest. Stay in touch with the program at Nelson Mandela University. Join in to guest lectures if you happen to be in the area where they are presented and be part of the process of continuous or perpetual learning. Things are constantly changing and new developments take place all the time. Stay up to date and help to promote the Nelson Mandela University program. It has been our experience over the years that a large number, if not the majority of our recruits, enroll to the program as a result of recommendations from our alumni. We are very happy about, about that and trust that you will continue the practice of marketing the program both by word of mouth and by your example. We see our alumni as some of our most valuable and enduring assets. With those words, I want to wish you well on your paths ahead. Make the contribution to sport in your country that is sorely needed. I am convinced that we have a wealth of talent that is just waiting to be uncovered and developed to make us world beaters. Good luck. Thank you for your kind attention and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. I hope uh, where Denver is, and I think he's at home, I hope uh, by reading that I've spoken in your spirit and your presence was felt here. Get well, and hopefully when you do have that operation, everything goes according to, to plan. I think this is, uh, we're drawing to the sad part of the evening, which is nearing the end. But that's, that just means it's the end of the formalities. And last time I checked, it is a Friday night, which means <laughs> we can party. <laughs> and that's also something I, s I actually said to Werner that I missed about um, being face to face. I always made it a point um, each block week to, maybe I should not be mentioning this um, because again, uh, Vernon is here, um, Prof Soji is here, uh, Pierre is here, but for the students I did it. I'd go out with them, we'll come back to two o'clock in the morning, 
having fun showing them the town, painting the town red with the students. And I think the last few editions, that's what's been missing. And as risky as that is, because at six o'clock I need to be at the, un at the university, at the building, their tea is ready, their coffee is ready, and it'd be very evident to struggle to wake up because some of the students were going to class with two cups of coffee. <laughs> so, but I think that was one of the reasons um, doing that each edition really brought them together. And I hope in some small form of way, you guys, some of you are staying the weekend, or even if it's tonight, do yourselves a favor, get together, enjoy a last drink before you part ways physically, but I know spiritually you guys will still remain together. And with th those words, I'd like to call upon Mr. Matthew Bonisi to do the vote of thanks. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, Buchle, for being an awesome program director tonight. And the whole time I was sitting thinking about the theme, I was trying to come up with something for my suit, but I, I couldn't think of anything. So you got me there. But um, yeah, before I uh, start the, the vote of thanks, I would just like to, to thank the CIS team for inviting me here. I am actually standing in for our interim HOD, uh, Dr. Aisha Kolvadia, who is currently celebrating Eid today. So she's with her family. But I'm very honored to be here and to, to be doing this for you. Um, so to start off the vote of thanks, um, the CIS team management and organizers would like to thank the following. Prof. Soleka Soji, who is the director of the School of Behavioral and Lifestyle Sciences, the Faculty of Health Sciences at Nelson Mandela University, for attending and speaking on behalf of Nelson Mandela, Mandela University and the faculty. Thank you, Prof. <laughs> Secondly, Prof. Pierre Langfranchi uh, for representing CIS, uh, for your support over the past 16 years and for speaking on the night. Thank you, Prof. <laughs> the other CIS staff, especially Vincent, uh, Munir, and Roland Cavallon, for the on, Chavalon, sorry, <laughs> my pronunciation's a bit dodgy, uh, Chavalon, for their ongoing support also for the past 16 years. The CIS and FIFA, for the financial and other support for the past 16 years. The academic facilitators of the program, Debbie Derry, Dr. John Berger, Advocate Daryl Newton, um, they, uh, sorry guys, my eyes are a bit dodgy tonight. I'm just gonna hold my phone up closer. Uh, Raigana Abrams, for their exceptional expertise um, as a cornerstone to the success of this program. Thank you. Then also to Francois Duplessis for the photographer photos that you guys are going to receive after this. Uh, Poncho Mabena and Bruce Gordon for the media and live streaming services. <laughs> Gail Alforti for your ongoing support to the CIS program and for organizing this amazing event tonight. Thank you. <laughs> to our master of ceremonies, Bukhle Dumbu, Bukhle Shane Dumbu, excuse me, for your exceptional work as administrative manager on the CIS program for the past 12 years, and for his work as MC tonight, and for doing the welcome. Thank you, Bukhle. <laughs> the staff of the Department of Human Movement Science for their support and assistance, in particular Shona Ellis and Pippanel, and lastly to... Thank you. 
and lastly to Mzwakile Sigudu for speaking on behalf of the 2020 edition class at tonight's function. And may I add, you said you did not plan that, but wow, that was an amazing speech. And I think I need to come to you for some pointers next time. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your night. Thank you. Don't worry, I don't suffer from short man syndrome. <laughs> I'm very comfortable with my height. Uh, I did mention earlier um, that there is something special, uh, a little surprise. Uh, you all can see on your tables there is, uh, if you're watching the, uh, the slides, slideshow that um, Ms. Hal Forty beautifully put together for us, you saw the national animal of Qatar, and that is an oryx. And that's uh, what's on the table. So we can see we have a silver plate in front, of, in front of us. Underneath that plate, if you pick it up, I'll wait, wait. <laughs> you see, you can trust Africans anyway <laughs> to first do before they, they listen or read the manual. So wh wh when I say go, look underneath. If you find the picture of that national animal, the salt and pepper is yours. And go. <laughs> so you may take home that salt and pepper. Uh, I know maybe in your homes it might be running low, so there's no need to run to spa or, or pick and pay to pick up any. I think it's safe to say that we've pretty much come to the end of our formalities of this evening. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to travel during these difficult times. I mean, we've got petrol prices increasing. Those same petrol prices, I haven't shared it with her, even though she's at home, but I'm considering buying a bicycle <laughs> to come to work now because of these petrol prices. And I know uh, Kodrick had mentioned that um, they took the trip down and they drove down. And maybe two, three years back, that would have been an easy decision to make. But with the petrol prices today, that was a really, really difficult uh, decision to, to make. And I hope the fellow students that are here appreciate each other for making the trip and for the students that have made the trip to come here and celebrate this great evening. Um, so. We appreciate you guys for doing that. Thank you for looking smart. And ladies, thank you for putting those and taking out those outfits. I know it's been a while because of COVID since we've gone out. Those outfits have had price tags sitting in the wardrobes. Your husbands have gone mad asking, why did you waste that money to buy that outfit? Tonight is why. <laughs> and thank you for taking them out and, and really looking smart and, and beautiful as everybody has. And I'd like to say thank you for this humbling experience to being offered the opportunity to stand in front of you. And the power came back. But as I was saying, I think uh, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to uh, stand in front of you. I am truly, truly humbled. 
um, as I said in the beginning, I think Zoyan will tell you my story that if anybody asked me this when I started on this program, that in 2022 I'd do this, I would have told them you're crazy. Um, but here I am today. And thank you, and I'm truly, truly humbled to each and, each and one of you that has entrusted me with, uh, with such an honor. I'd also like to say I think there are a lot of unsung heroes in this program. And for me, um, this may be very subjective and very biased, but it's something that I have to share. I'd like to say a great, and it's a priceless, there's no amount of money, no amount of thank yous that anybody can pass to this man to say thank you for your sacrifices to this program. But before I continue with that, I'd like to say thank you to, to you, Lauren, because I know to <laughs> I know it takes a lot of sacrifice to be at home by yourself when he has to take your peer, your Vincent, to dinners and come home at 10, after 10 at night and to have him leave home at 7 o'clock in the morning to then get back at his time. So for you letting him go to do what he loves and be that support structure towards him, to you as well, there's no amount of thank yous that we could pass on to show our appreciation. The best that we, I think we can do is really give a, a resounding <laughs> clap. <laughs> and to you, Gail, first time <laughs> and probably the last time, <laughs> Thank you to you as well. Um, I don't know if either it's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm going to say it, but uh, I think those that are close to you have known what you've gone through. And for you to not to say, I mean, take a step back on the things that, you, that you've that you done in the past because of what's happened to you, but yet for you to say, you know what, I'll get back on the horse and still help out in this program and still choose to organize this event. I know what that's taken. And to your family, um, thank you so much. Thank you to you that you still have that love and passion for this program and for us. And it's really shown that we've become a family in sport management. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and back to the man of the hour. Um, you have me personally help me grow in a very tough, at times, way but also in a very mental and fatherly manner. And thank you for those tough times I have grown. As they say, diamonds are created under pressure. And I'd like to think, not in any kind of boastful manner, for the fact that I had the ability and the courage to apply for the FIFA Master Program. That was because of your time that you have created this program and that a man will sleep peacefully once he has served his purpose in being a leader and carving a path for those that will follow, that he shall rest in peace. Not saying that your time is near. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that that path for us and you've created a journey that many will look back on and say, we are here because of that individual. So to you, and I hope people will join me in this, just to stand and say thank you to this man.